Hey, hey, welcome, welcome to our first official Elite Leadership Panel Q&A, y'all. I am so thrilled and honored to be hosting this amazing event with these rock star leaders. You guys, this is a moment, okay? It is um, so awesome to be in the presence of these amazing leaders. And all together combined, these are elite leaders in paparazzi. So they are my paparazzi sisters and rock stars, okay? So I cannot wait for you guys to learn from them. So all together, we have a combined team number of, um, from the latest count, okay, 21,006 people, okay? Um, so we are some of the top, top leaders in paparazzi here, and uh, I cannot wait for you guys uh, to hear from them. So feel free to go ahead and spread the love, tell your people, share it with your teams and all that kind of stuff. And if anyone is on that is interested in the opportunity, seriously follow up with the person that sent you here because this is legit a gold mine opportunity. And we're so excited to share a little bit of our uh, wisdom and insight and all that with you guys. So to begin with, in case you guys don't know me, my name is Rochelle Beachy, and uh, I am currently a jet setter with Paparazzi Accessories. And uh, I am, let's see, Life of the Party Black Diamond, Crown Club 50, um, and I just really love what I do, y'all. This is actually my seven-year anniversary with paparazzi. Um, some of the girls on here have not been on here this long, and the coolest thing ever is we are landing in Paris on my seventh-year anniversary, and I joined paparazzi because I wanted to make an extra thousand and two thousand dollars. Uh, just so I have a little extra cash to travel in my dream. Actually, my dream vacation was to go to Europe. So I've traveled a lot this year, but we're so excited that we get to do this because of paparazzi. So that is a little bit about me. And so up next, I'm going to start introducing you to these amazing ladies. And then we're going to have an amazing Q&A time. And at the very end, we may open it up if we have a few minutes um, for some extra questions, okay? So uh, thank you guys for tuning in. So up first we have, up next here is Melissa. Hi, everybody. My name is Melissa Proposi. Um, I joined Paparazzi January 17th, 2017. Um, um, I hit Elite that May. Um, I'm currently an A-lister with paparazzi, and I started in paparazzi because I suffer from a chronic illness, and it had been six years at the time that I found paparazzi, and it really gave it really gave me um, sorry, it gave me a purpose, it gave me a reason to get my life back and to serve others, which is what I was doing um, when illness hit. So that is my story. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So up next we have Misty Johnson. Go ahead, girl. Hi there, my name is Misty Johnson and I'm an elite consultant with Paparazzi. I'm currently an executive producer, which is one of the baby elites. Um, and I started in October of 2014, back when there was no Facebook Live. Um, we actually posted pictures really fast to Facebook. Um, and during that time, um, I didn't really take it as, as seriously as I do now. And we'll talk more about that later, but I am currently, um, my husband and I do this together. We are life of the party platinum crown club 10. And, um, we, we love what we do. We started doing this, um, to pay a car payment. And these days we do it for a whole different story. So, or for a whole different reason. So we'll share more about that in a little bit. Love it, love it. Thank you, Misty. So up next, we have the lovely Lisa Abercrombie. So go ahead, Lisa. Thanks. This is so fun. Um, my name's Lisa Abercrombie, and I've been in paparazzi probably the longest here. I've been doing it for almost eight years, and so we've seen lots of changes, and I like trying to stay ahead of those changes, and um, that keeps it exciting for me. I am currently a Maven A-lister, and that when I was um, first signed up, that was my ultimate goal because that was the top rank in the company at the time. I'm also Crown Club 50 and I had hit uh, Life of the Party Diamond last year and Black Diamond this year. And so my business has still been growing and that's what keeps it exciting. So I'm excited to do this today. 
Love it, love it. I remember meeting you, Lisa, in Vegas there. Um, that was super fun. I still remember that years ago. <laughs> so up next, we have Heidi Bound. Go ahead, girl. Hey, hey, hi, paparazzi. Rochelle, I want to first, before I even introduce myself, thank you for doing this because the amount of work that went into setting this up is relatively monumental. So put that shout out. I'm sure we, I can speak for everybody here. So thank you. Um, I have been with Paparazzi since July of 2017. I'm an elite consultant and um, the uh, leader of the Gotham gang. So hey team. Um, I am fashionista and Crown Club 25 and one of the brand new uh, Pink Diamonds. What else, what else? I was a teacher for 23 years and um, yeah, here I am doing paparazzi full time. So absolutely honored to be here. So thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Heidi. Okay, last but not least is the lovely Amber. Go ahead, girl. <laughs> Hey guys, I'm Amber Van Winkle. Um, I started actually in March of 2017. I am an A-lister with paparazzi. Um, my, I hit Black Diamond, the life of the party this year. We were platinum last year, so we've seen a lot of growth in the last year. And um, I originally actually started because I wanted to get my jewelry cheaper because I, you know, $5 is cheap, but to me, $275 was even cheaper. So I actually started with a totally different purpose and now um, I dedicate a lot of my time to trying to help other people gain confidence and um, realize their full potential when sometimes we don't see that about ourselves. Um, so a lot of people call me and my husband the Van Winkles. So you don't even really have to know my first name. You just have to know I'm a Van Winkle. <laughs> Did I freeze? <laughs> I'm really confused. Rochelle's going to be right back. She had to restart her connection. So if you guys want to, we can each tell everybody one, um, one of the things that has affected our family. I'll just be super quick so we can go while we're waiting. Um, my kids are all boys, but I make them work for me. And so it's been really effective to teach my kids hard work. Amber, do you want to go next? Um, I also have two boys, so uh, a lot of times you guys will see them kind of hop in with me, but ultimately uh, for me, this has affected my confidence more than anything. So when I started paparazzi, I couldn't make eye contact with people. Um, I couldn't look you in the face when I was talking to you. I couldn't talk in front of a group of people, let alone like one or two people. And so I know how many people around the world suffer with self-confidence issues because they have been taught their whole life that they don't deserve more than that. So for me, this is a huge opportunity uh, for me to teach other people that they deserve to be here and um, that your confidence comes from within you, not from what other people say about you. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Can you guys hear me okay? Can you guys hear me? Okay. I am so sorry, y'all. So I heard my help. Um, and my computer like died on me. So I'm back y'all and we're going to keep the party going here. So <laughs> thank you guys for bearing with me here. Okay. So up next, we have another awesome question for you guys. So, um, we have powerhouses here with tons of insights. So I want you guys, um, to hear their insights. So the next question that we have for you guys is why did you join paparazzi? And how has your why changed over time? And that question is for Heidi and Misty. Go ahead, girls. This unmuting myself thing, I have to remember. Um, so my why when I first started was simply because I was, um, I wanted to make a few extra dollars. As a teacher um, working for 23 years and living in New York City, 
the um, money was enough to cover the bills with a little bit left over. So um, my sponsor, Anne, um, I taught with her and I saw her and I was like, oh, check it out. Like she has like super cute jewelry going on. So I sat with my husband, Marty, on the 4th of July two uh, years ago and said, you know, what about trying this thing out? What about doing this? And he was like, girl, what's the worst that could happen? You end up with a box of jewelry. I think you'll live, right? If it doesn't work out. I'm like, yeah, good point. Um, so at that point, it was just to put a few extra dollars into my account so that we could live a little bit more comfortably. And um, two years later, could have never imagined what paparazzi would have given to me. And at this point, yeah, I do it for the, the cash, right? Like we're silly to say that we don't because it does help us all. Um, but now I have a platform that I never could have possibly imagined two years ago. Um, I would stand in front of kids and would hope that they were hearing me and hope that, I, that they would walk away feeling inspired to do something big with life. And now I know that <clears throat> there are times that I'm talking and I don't even realize who's on the other side of the camera. So my why now is to continue to inspire people to continue to live my best life so that other people can see that it's possible for them too. I love that. Thank you so much, Heidi. So up next we have Miss D. Wow. So when I started in 2014, um, I actually wanted nothing to do with it. Um, I didn't wear jewelry. I couldn't wear earrings because they irritated my ears unless they were platinum. And um, I just wasn't that into jewelry. Um, and I had a best friend who was, is definitely into jewelry. Uh, she's into all the bling, all the bells, all the whistles, totally opposite of me. But she's my best friend, so she's bugging me and bugging me. And of course, she has this party on Facebook where I have to join this event. They're going to post all these pictures. And I was, a, um, I was the women's ministries leader in our church. So I'm thinking, oh, secret sister, gifts for ladies. Oh, that's cute. That reminds me of so-and-so. Or I know it, I had $60 in my cart and just asked her on a whim, how much does it cost to join? She told me $99. I did the math after she told me how much you earn. And um, I signed up for whatever reason, because <laughs> it was totally out of my character. And here we are. And what I determined was, I may not wear jewelry, but I will pay our car payment. We needed two running cars and we only had one. So um, we determined to pay our car payment, full coverage insurance, which was huge for our household because there was no extra money to do that. I literally did the math as an accountant and found out how many pieces I needed to sell to make sure that was paid every month and we did it. Um, and my why has changed. We obviously repaid the car payment. It moved on to let's pay the mortgage. Um, and in between there, we fixed our credit. We were trying to become responsible stewards. Um, and as a minister, I'm also a minister of the gospel. As a minister, um, women are my jam. I, I, I may not have been crazy about jewelry, which you can see I, that got cured. <laughs> I love, like, I love jewelry. I can wear it all. And, um, and I love it. I can't get enough, but I can impart courage to women. Um, it's some, there's, I think every live I get off and someone messages me and just ask for prayer, ask for hope or encouragement. Or one of the great things I love about my husband, he does this with me too, is I'll get a message from someone thanking me for the card or the gift that we sent. I'm not, I have no idea what we sent because David, um, put a card in there and a free piece of jewelry that reminded him of them and, and just encouraged. So our why has changed. It's definitely a platform, like Heidi said. Um, and yes, it's an income. We have, we now make our incomes inside the home instead of outside the home. Um, and then imparting courage to women and just giving them that hope. And you can do that. We can give and that's the biggest thing. I love to be able to give, and it's given us an opportunity to do that in more ways than just monetary, um, whether it's a conversation, a prayer, um, or someone just to listen. So it is really, it, paparazzi does so much more. It's a, it's a vehicle that's used um, to connect you to people, and, um, and I love that. Thank you, ladies. That's so awesome. I love it too, y'all, and, and the thing is, Ultimately, yes, as they said, you can make amazing money, 
but the platform and what you learn and the growth that happens in your own life and how you can bless and inspire other people is just like mind blowing. So love it, love it, love it. Thank you guys. So up next, we have another question here for Lisa and Heidi. Um, we believe that paparazzi provides the opportunity to create the kind of life that you love and dreamed about. Um, how has paparazzi benefited you? I know we've already talked about that some, but how has paparazzi benefited you guys uh, personally? So Lisa first and then Heidi. All right. Um, so like the other girls said, of course, the money is nice. So no one's complaining there. And my husband likes of course, likes that because he's, it's tangible, tangible proof that it works. Um, I also love, love to solve problems. And so it's really fun to see, you know, like a challenge somebody might be having on my team or not, or even if it's my own challenge. And I love figuring out a solution for it. It's like, I love fixing stuff, I guess you could say. Um, but my most important thing that's made my, like my dreams come true is Kind of what um, the other girl said, I love teaching and I love, I went to college to become a teacher through the medical field and didn't really have to ever work doing that. And so this is my opportunity to fulfill that teaching dream and to serve other people. And I, um, I like to teach ideas and I can teach beyond my team. Like even what we're doing now, we're able to teach beyond our team because it's a full paparazzi family. So that has really, really been my driving force since I figured out that was what was happening. Thank you so much, Lisa. You're awesome. I know you're teaching people all the time. <laughs> okay, so go ahead, Heidi. You're up next, girl. All right. So the kind of life I wanted to to live. Wow. So for over two decades, um, teaching, it was really hard to go and do things. Um, people would say, oh, well, you have the summers off, right? But you have the summers off. And um, that made it tricky to do things for the other nine-ish months of the year. So what paparazzi has given me the, the opportunity to do is actually um, travel. I have been in an airplane more in the last year of my life than I have been in my entire 45 years of existence, well, 44 years prior to the last year of existence combined. Because as a teacher, if I wanted to go and do something, I was not able to get the time off, right? So um, my husband, Marty, is a full-time uh, musician in New York City. I can say full-time now because he has also been given the kind of life that he's always wanted because he was teaching at five private schools and as of this past June um, was able to retire from all of them. So he is now uh, able to fulfill his dream of being a full-time musician in New York City, which is just amazing and mind-blowing to think that I've known him since I'm 10 years old and watched him in band playing trumpet. Um, and I would move my seat so I could look and wave, yeah. And so I digress, but um, we now can just go, right? And I know that that might sound like just kind of a simplistic answer, but there's, it's just that freedom to be able to say, yeah, I'm gonna go with you on that cruise, Marty, that you're playing in November, because now I can. The only boss I have to ask is me. Um, we went to Virginia this past weekend because he played an amazing gig down there. Um, I, I hopped in the car, threw some albums on my Facebook page, and we went. So it's that opportunity to live and explore and have new adventures that I only ever wished I could have before. That's awesome. I love that so much. I mean, seriously, freedom to me has been a huge thing, you know, um, because when I started this journey, um, I did it just for an extra, you know, for, for a little bit of money, right? But then eventually, when, when Merle was able to quit his full-time job and not be tied down to that nine to five, oh my word, it's been life-changing for us. So Agreed. super, super grateful for that. I love that. Okay, so as an elite consultant, we have all decided sometime along the way to go all in with this business, okay? Because if your mindset isn't all in, you know, there's so many direct sales companies out there and people think it's a scam, or that it's a pyramid scheme or all that kind of stuff. Of course, we know that paparazzi is freaking legit and is on fire and we're making it a household name, okay? Uh, but in any kind of business, I don't care what business it is, 
Um, unless you really go all in and have the all in mindset, you're probably not going to get very far. You might, you might have a fun with it. You might have a little extra money, you know, on the side, it might be a fun little hobby, but until your mindset switches to that whole, just being all in, like taking that huge leap and you're, you're in 1000%. Um, so we've, we've all been there. I know as elite leaders, um, as being, you know, one of the top here in the company, um, we've all gotten there. So what, what was the deciding factor for you girls? Um, so I'm going to let Amber and Melissa answer that. So Amber, you'll be up first. Go ahead, girl. Um, so when I started, I started solely for the discount and my husband said the whole thing that everybody's husband says, they're like, you did what with our money? I was a stay at home stepmom, so I didn't make any money of my own. So he was kind of like, I can't believe you signed up for a pyramid scheme and just like completely confused why I would even decide to do this when I wasn't a jewelry girl. I didn't wear jewelry. I'm a tomboy. I wear jeans and t-shirts. So, um, he actually told me. I would never make money selling $5 jewelry. And for me personally, I am a, I love a challenge. I love a good challenge. So as soon as he said I wouldn't make money, I had to make money. Um, it actually got to the point, like I started paying one bill here and one bill here. And then he was like, okay, it'd be really cool if I could retire off of this. And so that became my ultimate goal was to retire him. Uh, we sat down, figured out how much money we had to have in order to retire him. And then uh, six weeks ago, actually it's been like two, two and a half months now, he's actually been retired for two and a half months completely. Um, and that was a huge, we honestly went all in when I decided to stop side hustling my business. I feel like, you know, we all have two or three nights a week that we can do something extra, but to do it every single day and treat it like a full time was when we really decided to go all in. And that was when he went to our first Empower Me Pink together we came back really dedicated to making this a full-time thing so that we could change our lives for us and for our children. That is awesome. Love it. Love it. Okay. Melissa, you ready girl? I'm ready. So I just wanted to say real quick, I was nervous when I first talked, but I want to tell you ladies, I'm honored to be on this panel with all of you. And thank you, Rochelle, for all your time and energy you put into this. So for me, I knew that um, the pivotal moment when I decided to go all in was the very first week that I joined paparazzi. I bought the 499 kit and the first week I sold the whole entire kit. And I just knew then that this was the real deal. This was for me. I had been on and I had been disabled for five years prior and I was a nurse anesthetist. I made really good money. I lost my earning income at an early age. I was only 37. I felt very, um, I don't know what the right word is for this, but kind of like I wasn't holding up my end financially for the family because we all took a hit when I lost my earning income. So when that happened, I knew I was all in and four months later I made elite and have been going ever since. So that it was that first week I had two lives, an open house and an album party and everything was gone. And I was just like, okay, we're doing this. And I did, and I still going strong. So thank you. Love it. That is amazing. So you definitely went boom, boom, shakalaka right there. You were all in for real. That is awesome. Love it. And you know, and that's what I love about paparazzi as well is that it, everybody's journey is different. And, uh, you know, we're not here to try to compare each other's story or anything like that. We all have something to give. We all have unique gifts and strengths that we can offer our team. And, you know, it's just important for each of us and, and for everyone that's watching as well, you know, uh, we have a lot of non-elite people watching, right? And you guys can do this too. If we can do this, you guys can totally do this as well. We're not like, uh, I mean, I know there's a lot of brilliant people on here, right? But we're normal people, right? We're, we're your normal people with big dreams and we just went for it. So you guys can do this too. This is not rocket science. I'm telling you what, this product is amazing this company is amazing and we're going to talk about more of that here as well so um the next next question is what keeps you motivated i love this question y'all because this is very important especially when you are an entrepreneur when you're owning your own business what keeps you motivated in your business for the long term and also how do you motivate your team as you build that team so up first will be heidi and then amber 
All right. So before I even answer that question, Michelle, I want to just kind of piggyback off of something because um, I think it's really important to say. Um, we're hearing a lot of people talking about like, well, this person retired, that person retired, I retired, my husband retired. Um, but it's really important, I think, for that person that's just starting out to realize that that's not a decision that you make in 24 hours. Um, that's not a decision that you make just because, you know, you sell a whole bunch of pieces your first week. There needs to be a strategy and a plan to that. Um, so for me personally, I knew that with before I could retire, I needed to hit elite. And if I hit elite, then I felt comfortable in my business and in my commission. So I just want to kind of put that there because sometimes I think people get this idea of I'm going to buy a starter kit and I'm going to retire. Right. And that's not smart. <laughs> um, so just wanted to kind of put that out there. But um, and, and with that, what keeps me motivated in my business for the long term? I kind of don't have a choice. Um, I mean, I, I, I do, but I walked away from a really long career. So my motivation every single day is to get up and to make this thing work. And I was really lucky. I didn't have anybody behind me saying this isn't going to work and what if, and I didn't actually have that, um, which was quite a blessing. But um, at this point, I don't want to go back to a situation where I wasn't completely appreciated for the work that I was doing. Um, we're now in a company where we are above and beyond um, rewarded and spoiled and appreciated and the respect is given um, it's top notch so my motivation with that is to get out of bed and make it work because that's my life now and I don't want to I don't want that to change um, how do I motivate my team <laughs> if they're here they'll tell you um, I keep it very real with my team um, I tell them about the possibilities that are there and I'm an, I'm an example of that for them. Um, but at the same time, if things get really rough and, you know, it's not all glitter and butterflies for me either. And when things get hard, I think that transparency with your team is really important because you're telling them like, this is really difficult right now, or I'm in this like kind of struggle, but here are some things that I plan to do to problem solve it. Cause you either stay on the ground in a tantrum or you figure it out. Um, and I think that those are conversations that, um, help motivate your team because you're, they're realizing like you're, a, you know, as a leader, you're a real human being and she gets me and she gets those problems and she understands where I'm coming from. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay. So thank you for letting people know that this doesn't just happen overnight as well. You know, <laughs> um, it's not a get rich quick. It's not, but I'm telling you what, I mean, you can make legit money and that, you know, yeah. reasonable amount of time if you're willing to just jump all in and really treat it like a legit business so that's awesome okay amber go ahead girl okay so um my husband when i first met him he talked a lot about the the five love languages and it's something that i share a lot with my team because i feel like your love languages transfer into your business as well so for me personally my love language is words of affirmation um, feeling recognized, feeling thank like people being thankful for things that I do for them. Um, those things really keep me motivated to hear people. Um, it's like a, a love hate relationship. It's scary because you feel the weight of your team on your shoulders because you don't want to let anybody down. But at the same time, it's nothing means more to me than somebody telling me that I've changed their life or I've inspired them in some way or helped them do something that they didn't think they were able to do before. Um, and giving them that empowerment that they really truly need. And so for me, um, that is the biggest motivator that keeps me going, finding that joy in my journey instead of just, oh, I hit this rank, let's hit the next rank or this rank, like take a minute and really enjoy that, that success because it's such a big deal. It takes a special type of person to have that kind of success. And then ultimately my children and my family, they, they are always a motivator for me because like Heidi said, I don't have a choice at this point, but to continue going forward, I can't stop. I'm, I'm too far ahead. So it's like, I can't turn back at this point. We have to keep going forward and keep motivating ourselves naturally through finding that joy in our journey. And my husband is a big motivator. You guys, if you've ever met him, he's like my positive Patty. And he literally is like all the time just 
you can absolutely do this. I think I've gained a lot of confidence because of him, because he believes that I can like move mountains that I don't even understand yet. And so um, he's a big motivator for me to keep me going. And then honestly, how I motivate my team is I am 100% real. And there are times that I make people mad at me because I give them 100% I'm not your mom. I'm not here to hold your hand. I'm here to make you the most successful version of yourself. And so to mo I'm not going to, I'm not like a cheerleader. I, I, that's just not my personality. I'm here to like really give you, to basically let you know that I understand your struggles and I've, I've been there, but you can absolutely, there's nothing special about me that makes me hit this elite, elite rank or hit a new sales goal that you can't do too. So for me, it's just like, stop making excuses and realize that all those, the fear of failure and all of that is all in your head. It's just my job to motivate you is to tell you to stop doing that. Stop stopping your own success by putting those obstacles in your own path. Um, so for motivation with my team, I mean, they just, they know I'm, I'm real talk all the way. I love them 100%. I don't think there's anybody else on the planet that wants them to succeed as much as I do. And I think they all know that when they message me versus uh, somebody else. So. That's a cool part with this business too, is you can rock this business your way, right? As a leader, of course, within compliance and all that kind of stuff, but we all have different gifts and talents. You know, we have different teachers here. You know, I'm not a natural teacher, y'all. I'm more the cheerleader than here's Amber over here. You know, woof, woof, woof. no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but in other words, we all have different personalities. And ultimately, when your team understands that you love them and that you're cheering them on in your own way, right? That's really what matters. They, they know that you really care about them. I'm sure every single one of your team, uh, I mean, maybe not everybody feels that way, but overall, your team is going to know that you love them. And that's ultimately what matters the most, because how does that quote go? People don't know how much you care or don't really know how much you, they don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. There you go. So anyway, okay. Up next, we have, how did you grow a successful business with what felt like, okay, limited money, space, or time? and or time. Okay, so we're going to have Heidi and Lisa answer that one as well. So I will let Heidi get started with that one. Go ahead, girl. I am really glad you asked me that question. I'm going to talk um, on time and space. Um, because as far as money, I was really fortunate my first year to have my um, teacher salary coming in at the same time I was trying to build my business. Um, I'm a big believer in if you want this thing bad enough, you're going to figure out how to make time and time is going to look really different for everyone. Um, but my biggest accomplishments right off the bat happened while I was teaching full-time special education in inner city, New York. Um, and I was in like a tough neighborhood and you know, all the things that go with that and sorry. <laughs> um, and so you know, I hit Black Diamond and Elite and got a Z necklace. I did all of that while I was teaching. And I think that what's super important about that is to figure out what are your goals and what are your baby steps and being strategic around that. Because there's times where people say, oh, I want to hit life of the party gold. Okay, well, what are, what are your numbers? Well, I don't know. Um, I want to be elite. Okay, well, what do you need to do so that you can get to premier director? Well, I don't know. Well, those are you, you have to use your time wisely and know not only your big goal, but where are you headed in those baby steps. As far as space, I think I might be running my business out of one of the smallest spaces in paparazzi. We're just going to put that out there. Yeah, you could disagree with me if you want, because maybe you have a smaller space, but I live in Manhattan and we're not living in the Manhattan apartment that you saw like, you know, on, you know, with Carrie Bradshaw. We're not looking at that apartment. We're looking at your typical New York City two bedroom apartment. So my business, um, and we sell, you know, anywhere from 2000 to over 3000 pieces a week. So you can imagine what comes in and out of here is in a 10 by 12 bedroom. So that's what we do. So 
Um, as far as how do we do that, we're really strategic on how we organize. We're really strategic on making sure that when things come in, that we have systems. It's all about systems, having systems in place, pulling albums, how to put things away. If you ask me where a certain red ring is, I'll know exactly where to find it because I don't have a choice. Um, it's super important for us. Um, so that way this doesn't, this room doesn't kind of like close in on us. Um, and it also helps us to uh, buy new inventory in a really strategic way as well, right? Um, because there's only so much room and I'll be, I'll tell you, there's only three paparazzi boxes in this room because everything is put away in other places. So otherwise I would, I would kind of lose my mind in this bedroom <laughs> if I didn't have systems in place. All right, I'll go ahead and answer that too. Um, and I love, I love Heidi's ideas. I actually try to um, manage my space in a small space, not because I don't have it. I do have a big garage I could be using, but I am very, very devoted to making whatever I do duplicatable. And I think the majority of people don't have space. So I, I, I do this in every single thing I do in the business. I'm like, what would most people have to do? I'm going to figure it out. So with my storage and rotation, I actually have a video on YouTube if you guys want to look it up. So I'm not going to cover that here, um, but it is without space. Um, second, I will touch on money for a moment because I wasn't going to, but there's one good tip I would recommend to anybody who signs up with paparazzi, whatever you, okay, first of all, it is a business. And so you do need money to invest. So please keep that in mind. And if you plan to grow your business, the best way to grow is to don't keep any money for as long as you can. When I started, I planned on one year. I just reinvested for a whole year. And then I decided to see how big it was at that point and if I liked it and everything. Um, so that's the money um, tip that I have. The time one I want to talk about that too, like Heidi did. Um, so when was it? Like two years ago. I decided to challenge myself and see if I could do this if I worked full time. Cause I don't, I'm very lucky. I get to stay home and I was reflecting on my time and you guys probably all do this. I was scrolling on Facebook like too much, way too much, wasting time doing nothing. So I wanted to figure out if I could sell jewelry and hit high selling goals within a given amount of time every day. So the schedule I gave myself was three hours a day for five days plus going live. I go live two times for two hours. And so what is that, 19 hours? I've kept a 19 hour schedule for two years and I've hit Black Diamond. And the way you do that, if any of you guys want to try to do that, now this is just selling. My team time is different and so I choose to market and do my team beyond those three hours, but it's, it's more fun, it's less um, systematic. With those three hours, what I do is if I can't, complete my goals for the day. Like if I'm going to invoice or post an album or whatever, if I can't, when I got to the point that I couldn't finish in three hours, I hired help. And it's kind of a weird thing to think you're like, man, I need to be loaded to hire somebody. But seriously, if you look at the numbers, you will sell. I think you get, do four times as much work with one extra helper because they're very efficient. They're on the clock. You can teach them your best way. They're not going to be overthinking things like you. So I'm to the point where I just hired my third helper. I am still working in my three hour time window. I actually do four days a week now instead of five. And so for me, I, I don't want paparazzi taking over my family time. And so I had to see if it could be done. And so I would suggest that to people who are limited on their time to hire help to make you still hit goals, but you can be efficient. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. Awesome tips. And you know, sometimes people like to cuddle up to their excuses instead of just like buckling down and hustling and being very, very intentional. I've actually recently hired a coach and I'm telling you what, it's so true, Lisa, when you actually really, really focus on something intentionally um, and, and instead of doing that lovely little scroll, you know, and when you're actually working, it makes a huge impact in your business. Just saying. So those are tons of awesome tips there. Thank you, girls. So up next, we have another question. What was the most pivotal moment in your business? Um, you know, maybe it just felt like this was just an amazing moment 
something extra special? What, what was, what was the most pivotal moment in your business? I know that's a big question. So we have Lisa and Melissa. All right. Um, this one is, there's a few things that made my business flip, but I'm thinking that the most one that will affect all of you guys is going live. Um, when Facebook Live came out, there were people selling pearls online and there were LuLaRoe people selling opening boxes. And I saw them and I'm like, they have it right. <laughs> I'm going to copy them. So I was one of the first, I think there were four or five of us that thought of this about the same time and I started going live. I wasn't even on camera. I only showed 20 pieces. It's so funny to see those old things, but going live changed the game. And I know it changes for so many people. And there's a lot of girls out there watching and guys who don't dare to go live. You need to. It is the motion of the business. It is the business. And if you want to sell beyond going live, it's okay. It, do, it doesn't mean it doesn't work. But I can tell you, I sold without live for five years. And I, and I hit elite in that point in five years. And, but then I triple ranked. In two years, I triple ranked up to Maven because of live. And um, it's just, it completes the network marketing plan, which is a relationship business. You can do that with video. There's, there's no other good way to do it. And even if you're only doing albums, not to say that they don't work, but people need to know your face. They just have to, that's part of the business. So I would suggest to everyone to do live video. That's where, that's where it's going. One more thing about that is I went live before it was like a thing. So something that's really helped me a lot is to try to stay ahead of the game. You guys know Facebook will die. I used to be part of AOL and I had all this stock and I lost it all because they went down in business. Facebook will do that one day. So have a backup plan and try to stay ahead of the game, just like with live video, so that you can keep your business um, reliable forever. Thank you, Lisa. Okay, Melissa, go ahead, girl. Okay, so for me, I couldn't pinpoint just one pivotal moment in my business, so I'm going to give you two pivotal moments, but they each have different intentions behind them. The first pivotal moment for me was when I achieved the Rock the Runway and got the Z model necklace. That showed me that setting goals for myself, goals and dreams, and working hard, I could achieve what I wanted to in this business. And that was pivotal for me because I was used to being run down because I was disabled and I wasn't able to do anything and I was this person that was just in bed all the time and here I am I find this amazing business and I set these goals and dreams and oh my goodness it came true for me and being up on that stage and just knowing that I put in the hard work and I made it happen made me want to even go and do more and and you know set higher goals for myself and for my team my second pivotal moment was sitting at my daughter's um, band competition in the crowd and I had a bunch of people turn around and look at me and say, you're Melissa, you sell paparazzi jewelry, right? And I said, yeah, I do. They're like, we watch you all the time. You, oh my gosh, you are the highlight of my night. I look forward to when you go live. You make me feel so much better about myself. I started wearing jewelry. Um, and then on the second part of that, I started receiving messages from people as I opened up more about my journey and about my, um, you know, just stuff that I was, um, why I did paparazzi and then my struggles with my health while doing paparazzi. And I got messages from people telling me that they weren't going to stay in bed anymore, that they were going to, you know, they felt like they had no purpose in their life anymore and they didn't want to live. And now they had something to live for because they watched me and they realized that life isn't over when you get an illness. That's a pivotal moment for me. That took this business from not selling just jewelry, but changing the world, changing people's lives. And that was very important to me. And it re resounded deep inside. And it really changed, you know, my purpose and my why changed, you know. So those are two big pivotal things for me on two different spectrums, you know, one personally with goals, the other one for what I wanted for other people, because I am a, like Rochelle said, I am a, a cheerleader and I am a giver and I care about other people and I really want to see them succeed. So those are my two pivotal moments. Thank you. Yeah, that's great. I love how paparazzi works, you know, for, 
so many people in so many different circumstances, you know, I mean, if you have like, you're, you're dealing with more of a, um, chronic illness and things like that, you know, everybody has their different story, right? And yet you can work paparazzi on the go, whether you're working that nine to five job and people are crushing it and working full-time jobs, you know, people, people work it, you know, whether they're a stay at home mom or whether they're busy or, you know, anything in between really. I mean, it, it can work for so many people on so many different levels, which is freaking awesome. Um, there's not very many jobs out there like that. Just saying. So, um, up next we have, how do you find joy in the journey when things don't go as you think they should? Okay. Ta-da! Just telling you guys, in case you guys didn't know this, if you own your own business, you're going to have moments like that. Okay. You're going to have moments where something goes wrong. Like tonight. Okay. This never happens. Okay. We're without electricity. My phone is like dying and um, I didn't know where my other phone was. So my dear husband is coming to the rescue, but of all nights, you know, without electricity, right? You can choose to be like, oh, I just give up. Or you're like, hey, I'm just going to rock this anyway. You're determined, right? So um, let's see. We're going to have Melissa answer first. Actually, I'm sorry. No, um, Misty first and then Melissa. Okay. So y'all don't have to wait for me. Just y'all can take your turns, Misty and then Melissa. Go ahead. All right. <laughs> uh, for, I just like to say that I love listening to each of you girls. I know that we're doing this panel for others, but um, you guys are really doing it for me. I, I'm, I'm learning a lot and I'm getting a lot from each of you. So I appreciate, I appreciate being here. Um, so find and joy in the journey when things don't go like they should. There are those moments in any business. I've ran businesses and now I have a business of my own and you know, you have goals. I try to watch the numbers and maybe it's not looking the way I want it to. Um, one of the things that I do is I have to stop and talk to myself. Remember how far I've come. Um, from someone who didn't even want to do this, wasn't interested, didn't wear jewelry, <laughs> and um, to now, right? So I remember how far I've come, not to forget, not to forget that. Um, I revisit my why. My why has changed. It's no longer a car payment. Um, it's like encouraging women. Um, and it also is being an example to my family. We have three grown children. Um, and they all are very hard workers and entrepreneurs in their own right, but they watch their mom. So I remember that um, to keep going. Revise if necessary. Um, sometimes what worked all along is not going to work going forward. So it's not that um, what you're doing isn't going as it should. It may be a signal that you need to revise. Um, and in order to revise, I always follow the numbers. Um, I use the leadership worksheet religiously from the resources in our back office. And um, I will look back two or three months. What was I doing when I was rocking it out in May? Um, and maybe, and I write everything down, what I did each week. If I posted an album, if I went live spontaneously, um, how many hours we went live, everything's documented there. So I'll follow the numbers and go look. Um, and, and so that's how I, I, I try to come out of it and just keep going. And many of the ladies were all kind of repeating the same information here. Um, but I know I'm someone who learns a, a different way than somebody else. Um, but many of the ladies have already said it here. I have no choice. It's, t I have to keep going. My husband and I, we're in this thing. We're in it now. And so whether it looks like it's working or not, we got to keep going. And the easiest way for me when that happens is to remember how far I've come, revisit my why, and then revise if necessary by following the numbers. So. Okay. So how do you find joy in the journey when it's not so joyful? There's been many, many times when I experience this not only you know due to illness but due to like you know your team's not getting along people don't like what you have to say there's all kinds of problems you encounter so for me i think first off you need to know what you as an individual need to do to keep yourself finding joy we're all different we are all different for me i plug into my motivational speakers that i love i listen to eric thomas i listen to rachel hollis i have my john maxwell books i love zig ziglar i i plug into those. I know when I'm not finding joy. I know myself. 
So I plug into those things because that's what helps me find the joy. I regroup and I find the joy. Um, not only that, I remind myself that I'm running my own race. I don't compare myself to everybody else, which was a huge problem for me in the beginning. So when I, when I keep my blinders on, I focus on myself and what I need to be doing to find the joy and I don't compare myself to other people, I find that the joy comes back. And not only that, I do give myself accolades for the little accomplishments in the day that I do do. Um, I might have had a crappy day, I canceled my live, but I posted a wall drop. I managed to do that. So then I do give myself a little bit of accolades for that and I build up on those to you know, find the joy and get back on track. So thank you. Yeah, that's awesome. I love those tips, you guys. It's so important. It's so important to celebrate yourself in the middle of the journey. Um, it's so important whether you just started yesterday or whether you've been in the business a while to just celebrate the wins because you're going to have ups and downs in any kind of business. I don't care what kind of business it is. You're going to have ups and downs, but if you're willing to celebrate along the way, and you also got to take care of yourself. Okay. Just saying, this is Rochelle just being like your big sister. You got to take care of yourself um, <laughs> when you have, uh, when, when you're taking care of yourself properly, when you're being poured into, like uh, Melissa talked about motivational speakers and things like that, right? Then you have to give to other people as well, which is awesome. So, okay. Up next we have, what does beat your best mean to you? So we have Heidi and Amber and I'll let you guys just take it uh, one at a time there. So go ahead. All right. So beat your best, beat your best to me is super personal in the sense that um, everybody's best is different, right? Everybody's purpose for beating their best is different. Um, but I do think that beating your best needs to be lined up with whatever your goals are. So if you're looking towards um, having a certain goal for sales, then beating, like, if I'm looking at like beating my best, it's, it's what is my end result? What am I looking for as far as like the big picture? Um, for me personally, for this past convention, um, I was beating my best, but I really didn't know what the number was that I was shooting for, or maybe why I was shooting for it. Um, because I went to Vegas, like, well, what if they lay something on top of Black Diamond? I don't know. And everybody had all these guesses as to what they thought the number would be. Um, and so I pushed really hard for a certain PV, um, which also gave me a little bit of a buffer. Um, and so when we got to Vegas, the, um, my beat my best, it, it worked for me. It, it gave me, um, pink diamond. And it also now gave me this vision of what this fiscal year will look like for me, because now I know what my goal is for next year and it's pink diamond again. Um, and it's, you know, having that in mind. So beating my best is looking at those numbers, pushing a little bit harder, um, but I also think that it evolves and it changes, right? So um, I'm pretty happy with, with, with where my sales are, but at the same time, I'm constantly looking to reach new customers because let's keep it real, new customers can turn into new team members. Um, so my goal right now with Beat My Best is looking towards adding more people to my business page and um, doing things like behind the scenes to make that happen. Um, whether it's giveaways or it's tapping into many chat in different kinds of ways. Um, it's beating my best with those numbers, right? Because I want to take my team and I want to continue to inspire new people. And the only way to do that is to reach new potentially what customers, right? Our customers potentially turn into team members. So that's beat my, that's what I'm doing right now to beat my best. Go ahead, Amber. Okay, I was waiting for you to tell me. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> you so, um, hashtag beat your best for me was like a huge game changer for our business. So that kind of came out at Empower Me Pink. Um, it was said, uh, hashtag beat your best. But for me, it was like, well, what's your best? What is my best? And every aspect of our business, if you don't know what your best is, then you've got to establish that before you can beat it. So I had to figure out, you know, what was our top viewers? What was our top 
replays? What was our top sales? What top sales weeks we had? You know, what was our best day selling? Like I basically wrote down every aspect of my business to have a, a level that I was going to beat. What was my best recruiting month? Um, and then I looked at like, well, what did you do to even hit that in the first place and create it as a best for me to actually beat it. So beat your best is something that I preach to my team a lot because it also reminds you that your journey is your journey. It's not beat Heidi's best or beat Melissa's best or beat Amber's best. It's beat your best. And a lot of times I think we do get wrapped up in what other people are doing and maybe they're beating us or, you know, going through the ranks a lot faster than us. Who cares? That's their journey. That's not their, your journey. It doesn't pay your bills. You growing in your business pays your bills. So I try not to worry about what other people are doing for me. Beat your best solely has to do with me. And that's my favorite topic. I don't know if you guys know a lot about me, but when it comes to establishing goals, my favorite goals have to do with myself because I am the only factor in that goal. It doesn't mean I have to rely on anybody else but myself to beat that goal. And so there's no excuses there. The only person to blame if I don't reach that goal is myself. And I prefer those type of goals. And I've told my team this before, when it comes to setting goals for myself, my favorite goals have to do with myself because they're not things that I have to rely on other people to do. And that should be, in my opinion, that should be everybody's favorite type of goal because you don't have to worry, well, if my team doesn't do this, then I miss my goal. Well, then you're mad at somebody else when you shouldn't be, you should be mad at yourself because there's something that you didn't do that you could have done better. So I love Beat Your Best. I firmly believe that you got to know where you started at and what your best is to even decide to beat it. But um, it's one of my favorite things to talk about is beating your best and um, improving upon yourself. And I really think that has a lot to do with, you know, finding the joy in your journey. Um, I'm super competitive. So if I establish another person as my competition, I create a lot of negativity there that shouldn't even be there because I'm trying to compete with them instead of just competing with myself. Because ultimately, it doesn't matter what somebody else is doing. It doesn't matter if somebody else flew through the ranks. Um, that doesn't affect you. That's not, your, that's not yours. It's great, and you're, I'm excited for them, but I really want to see what goals I can set for myself that I can achieve. Because I honestly, I, I don't like the saying... Um, if you shoot for the moon, you can catch a star along the way. Well, the, the star wasn't my goal. The moon was. So what I do is I set the star as my goal because it's a smart, realistic goal. And then I shoot for the moon because if I've already grabbed the star, I'm going to go for the moon now. So for me, I, I don't like to set myself up for failure. I like to set myself up for um, positive um, interactions back towards myself. And that means setting smaller goals, but I'm still beating what I've already done. That makes sense. <laughs> love it, love it. Thank you, ladies. So just an FYI to everybody that's watching, this is a different style of live. So this is actually a Zoom call live. And so I had, <laughs> I've been having issues here because of the electric and all, but I noticed there was some stuff happening on the live here. And um, let's just keep it positive. This is an amazing business. Um, we have so much to offer in this company and we're so grateful to be able to share this with you guys because this has been a game changer for us. So if you guys are wanting to um, follow us, you guys can follow anyone that you want to here. We're here to share tips and tricks with you guys. Um, we don't have like hidden secrets here. Um, we are here to bless and inspire um, anyone that's watching here tonight. Um, so we want you guys to know that most of us might have our friends list a little maxed out or, you know, need room for those new customers and things like that. So it's nothing against anyone, right? Uh, but we just need you guys to follow us. And uh, most of my uh, posts I know are public. So um, yeah, it's um, just a fun random fact of the day there, y'all. So back to the questions here. And thanks for all the shares and you guys popping on. You guys are awesome. So what does consistency in your business look like in the middle of real life? You know, we all face real life, um, you know, I'm not sure. <laughs> How many kids you guys have? I'd say most of you guys probably have children and you have holidays, you have family, you have life, right? Life happens, right? Maybe you're, you've, you've had to move in the middle of your business. I know I have. I have had health issues in the middle of my business. I've had all kinds of different things happen in the middle of my business, but I never, ever quit. So what does consistency look like to you guys in the middle of real life? 
So we're going to have Melissa first and then Misty, okay? And you guys can just share that one at a time, okay? Go ahead, girls. All right, consistency for me is a challenge, especially over the past um, year with my, I have four children and they have tons of activities. And, you know, the first two years of this business, I went live on the same two days. I had the same schedule and consistency meant never, ever sacrificing my job for um, something that came up. It was working things around that. I even remember scheduling hostess parties and, you know, missing some of my kids' games in the evening. I think a lot of times uh, the first thing to go when you have stuff that comes up is your lives or is your business. It's, I, I can just go live another hour. Sorry, guys, can't do a live tonight. I'm doing this or that. It's the first thing we put on the back burner. Well, being consistent means that it isn't the first thing we put on the back burner because in a regular job, you just can't decide that you're not going to go to your nine to five just because. So, Treating paparazzi like a job for me is what consistency looks like. So it means staying up later at night to get things done after everybody goes to sleep. It means scheduling my lives later at night after all the games are done, after I've traveled, after whatever is done. It means getting up early in the morning before they get up for school, before I make breakfast to do some extra things, to be able to always go live when I'm supposed to go live, when I say I'm going to go live. Um, so, and I know there's a lot of you that, that have a lot of children and that's what it means for you. But, um, also, um, it, I'm sorry. It also means for me, for my kids, cause they think I'm home at time that I need to stress to them that mommy's working her job. It means that from this time to this time, I'm going to be live. You cannot bother me. I'll make sure you have whatever you need before you go to bed or do this or do that. Or if you need a ride, no, don't come ask me during my live or don't ask me when I tell you I have a live. My schedule's up for the kids to see. I have older kids, teenage girls, and I have an 11 year old. So I make them know that this is my job. This is what mom does now so that she can be able to go with you whenever you need anything to always be there at all your school activities to be available. So I ha I've had to really over the past year, step it up with mommy's working her job. This is my job. This is what I'm working. This allows me to take you on a cruise. This allows me to get you an extra pair of shoes for back to school that you want or those vans that everybody has and you have to have. So um, I just think that sometimes you have to, as a stay at home mom or as a mom, as the leader of the household, you have to make your family and your kids respect the fact that this is your job and not always just sacrifice paparazzi for what's going on in your life. Okay, thank you. Okay, so consistency for me in the middle of real life and our business. Um, I have had a boss my entire life. I've always had some kind of side hustle. Um, I made it on boats in Florida, or if I was waitressing, I also cleaned houses. Um, but this is all I do. And, but I've always had a boss. I've always had, like Melissa was saying, you know, you have a, when you have a nine to five job or a job where you clock in, there's an expectation of you to work and to get certain tasks done in this amount of time. And I literally set a timer for myself in the middle of the day. And I say, you know, here's 30 minutes. This is the task you have to do in 30 minutes. How much can you get done? Because I don't know about you. It's real easy to get stuck in the scroll hole. Once you start, I start with the intention of just answering a few private messages. And the next thing you know, boom, I'm over here and an hour is gone. Um, and that's not acceptable. If I had a boss, they would not accept that. So I ask myself a lot, Misty, would your boss approve of what you're doing right now with your time? Um, and we have had life interrupt us. We were at Summit and our, um, our youngest grandson was born seven weeks premature. You know, um, that was crazy to be there on the other coast and you can't be here in Ohio where we are with your children. And there's literally a decision that had to be made. We didn't sacrifice, you know, the family's needs to be there, but we were already there. And that was really tough for me because I'm family. I'm a family oriented woman. I love my children. My grandbabies are my world. And um, that was really tough. So real life is my point. Real life came in and um, that was tough. Then, you know, just being here with my husband all day long. We're, I love my husband. We have a great marriage. We have a great relationship. We also work together. Um, we have different tasks. His skill set's different than mine. So, but it would be nice just to hang out and go have lunch and, you know, eat bonbons. But 
we have to make a decision to work and, and put, in, put in the effort. And I also love what Jeff Borden shared with us at Empower Me Pink this year, uh, because I said I would. And because I said I would be live Tuesday and Thursday, I'm live Tuesday and Thursday. Because I said I would post albums on Monday and Wednesday, you will get an album on Monday and Wednesday. Um, and so I'm real careful about what I promise as well. But consistency is key. And I think anywhere, if you're in paparazzi or anywhere that you are, um, anybody that's successful, one of the things they're going to say to you, one of the number one keys to success is they're going to say consistency. People need to know what to expect from you. And if they can't expect consistency, if I can't expect Kroger to be open down the street when I need milk at 10 PM, because I'm making something, you know what I mean? I'm probably not going to go there very often. So, um, and in the case like Melissa's where you have some health challenges, I'm sure she has a backup plan. You know, you can always, um, you can always flex or have a backup plan. And David and I have that too. So that's what I have. <laughs> Love that. Love that. Love that. And a timer, y'all, is like life-changing, okay? I'm 40 years old, but I still can use a timer in my life. Just saying. It's an amazing thing for time management. Just saying. So um, love, love, love those tips. That's awesome. So up next, we have, um, tell us about a time when negativity popped up on, on your team and how did you resolve it? So it looks like we have Amber first and then Misty, okay? We all... <laughs> we'll face negativity um, in our life, but it's how do we deal with it? So go ahead, Amber, and then Misty. Heidi's laughing because she has no idea what's going to come out of my mouth. <laughs> okay, so first off, I do want to address a comment that was made. So while Melissa was talking, my necklace kind of slid down my neck. It's because I have nails, and it's really hard for me to, like, clasp my necklace. It didn't actually break. But somebody asked me how I deal with that in like real life when that happens. I have a cackle. Everybody who meets me thinks my laugh is hilarious. But when really funny, awkward things like that happen, I just cackle out because it, it just can't. There's really nothing you can do about it. And people are going to laugh anyway. So I just laugh it off. So that's like my response to everything is I laugh about it. So when it comes to negativity, you guys, I have zero tolerance for negativity, period. I, um, I grew up in a very negative background. 100% every person who knows me and has heard my story, um, negativity breeds more negativity. So the first time you may even not have an issue with something that happens, but the second somebody talks about something negative, you're like, oh, well, maybe I am mad something new sold out, or maybe I am, my numbers aren't that great, or maybe I don't have enough viewers, or I'm not selling what somebody else is. As soon as you start down this like negative path, you need to stop yourself. Because first of all, if it's not something that you can, you have control over and you can fix, then let it go. Because all it's going to do is steal your joy and nothing in life is worth losing your joy over. So if you're one of those people that go to that negative mindset, if it's something that you can't control, let it go. If it is something within your control, come up with a solution because nothing good comes from sitting and complaining about it. We all have those moments where we need to just vent and get it off our chest, but there are appropriate people for you to vent to. Your downline is not appropriate people to vent to. They don't understand and all you're doing is creating that atmosphere in your team page and nobody wants to be a part of that. So if you're going to complain, you complain up because those people are the only people who actually will understand where you're coming from. Um, my husband got to the point like he would hold his phone away from his ear when I would call him because he didn't want to hear me complain. And that was a huge wake up call for me because it made me realize that I was looking at the negative side of everything. I had fallen into this negative hole and I had allowed everybody around me to kind of feed into that. So I zero tolerance whatsoever for negativity. Like I'll give you a swift chance to fix your attitude and then I just will completely block you out of my life because I don't need it. Nobody, nothing good thrives from negativity. And so if you can't change your mindset and you're not willing to change your mindset, I really don't have anything to help you with. So that's why Heidi was laughing at me. <laughs> uh, 
I'm with Amber on that. I have zero tolerance for it. And I know my team, Team Grateful, is on here. And so they're probably sitting on the edge of their seats knowing what I'm going to say, which <laughs> is don't compete, don't compare, don't criticize, period. You will get blocked. Um, that, and that is a message my pastor preached a year ago or two. Don't compete, don't compare, don't criticize. Those are the biggest beefs of joy. And let's face it, if you look for something negative or if you are a constant chronic complainer, it's going to be a wrap. That's what you're going to attract out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And what I like to say too, is if it gets in your head, it'll get in your mouth. And if it comes out your mouth, it's going right back into your ears, which leads to your heart. It's just a regurgitation and we don't have time for it. Um, and, but I do establish this. I have an open door policy, just like any business. If you are going to praise, you do it in public. If you're going to correct, you do it in private. So I have open door policy and my open door is my private message or my text. You can call me. I mean, you can say anything you want to there, but you are not going to put it publicly in a team and have it take off. Um, I don't care what got snatched out of your cart. There's hundreds of other pieces that are still cute. Your clients don't know what, what sold out and nothing got snatched. It's, you know, that sounds so, I don't know. It gets on my nerves. <laughs> nothing got snatched. It, it sold out and it happens. If that was happening on your live, we'd be having a different conversation. You'd be like, yeah, everything sold out. I didn't have enough to go around. It, it sold out so fast, right? So we want to be careful about the complaining, but we also, like I said, I've established, like she said, complain up come to me, but come to me in private. Um, because it does, it takes on, it's like, it's like she said, perfect. We're saying the same thing. You know, if somebody's mad about something and then they go post like those posts, if you pay attention into some groups I'm in, they're 700 comments, but somebody comes on and says, look, what's still in the back office. And three people are excited. Like what kind of world is that? But we have to be positive. So when there is that complaining or that negativity or that problem, I address it quickly. I address it right away. But if you are the person that has a problem for every solution, and there are those people, you give them a solution and they still have a problem, then eventually they just, they are, they were, they're on my team. They can call me, they can message me. I'm still connected to them but they may disappear from the team grateful team training page. You may not be able to find it anymore because we keep it positive. Yeah, especially as your team, as it, as it keeps growing, I appreciate y'all's insight there. I mean, I'm very, very passionate about this as well because um, I, I am all about keeping things positive. It really, I'm telling you what, your business will go downhill if you allow negativity to run, run over, because nothing is going to grow in a negative climate. Okay. Um, you need to, you need to feed your business with good things, right? With the rain and the sun and the, all these different nutrients and all that kind of stuff. Your garden is not going to grow if, um, you're throwing crap at it. Right. So, uh, you need to, uh, be building and, and putting, um, positive things in there and having a not and not embracing a poverty mentality because any one of you guys could totally do this as well. Any one of you guys can pass this up right in this business. There is room at the top for everyone. Okay. As long as you really want it and you're, you're hustling and you're hungry. Um, you can do it too. Um, as when we, when we embrace that abundance mentality and when we learn to celebrate each other and celebrate the wins and you know, it, yes, there's going to be hard times along the way as well. Um, uh, but don't just like, be kicking yourself over and over about something, you know, uh, celebrate the good things, learn from the mistakes and grow because growth is going to happen. Um, when you're willing, um, to learn from the hard things and the good things. Right. So thank you guys so much for that. So the next question, um, this is a little deeper and, um, this, you know, everybody probably faces this at one time or the other. Um, or at least you might, think things, right? So is there ever a time when you wanted to quit and how did you push through with your, with the motto of no excuses? So we have Heidi, Heidi and Lisa. All right. So first things first, if, if Rochelle right now is not the epitome of no excuses, then no one is because as I'm watching you, girlfriend, it's getting darker. <laughs> I'm like, somebody grab her a flashlight. You need like a spotlight on your face. So there it is. Um, 
for me personally, I was born and raised in a family of no excuses. Um, I was on the boys little league team and hated it and stood in the right field and picked the grass, but my mom wouldn't let me quit. Um, I worked at the same greasy hamburger joint for five years and when it would snow, you know, up to our waist in Pennsylvania, she would say, put on your boots and get to work. Like, that's just how I was raised. So that question of was there ever a time I wanted to quit, the answer to that is, and I can say 100%, no. I've never wanted to quit, but have things um, felt rough at times? Yes. But I'm a firm believer too in what do you do with that? So back in December, now we, we all can say, well, December is a slow month, right? Everybody's basically done with their Christmas shopping. People aren't really jumping onto our teams. They know holidays are coming. We can say that in sort of a general statement. Um, December for me, I was seeing some of my lowest sales um, in a really long time, almost scary, where I was saying to Marty, what have we done? Like, I retired from my job. What have we done? And so I could have been like, that's it, I quit. Like I need to go and, and do something else. I need to figure this out. Um, so instead we had a long conversation and what I realized was that um, I needed to change it up on my live shows. So um, we, what I was doing was I was spending way too much time and I was going very slowly showing one piece at a time. And so we had this like long soul searching conversation of like, we gotta move faster. We need to make it more fun. It needs to be, um, you know, you have to take people, you know, make people want to carry your, carry you with them to the bathroom so that they don't miss anything, right? That urgency. Um, so did I ever want to quit? No. Has it been rough? I mean, that's one example. Yeah. But I feel like it's all in what you do with it. Um, and then from there, take those ideas and share them with your, the, with your team, because there's going to be times where it feels rough for them for the same reasons. So quit? No. Figure it out? Absolutely. All right. Um, yeah, Heidi, you're smart. That's that's some of the same stuff I totally believe, and I like the way that you conveyed it. Um, I'm the same. I've never wanted to quit because why would I sign up and then quit? And so I just think, like, I have to do it. And I'm I'm totally a rule follower. Like, I just do what I'm supposed to. And so I feel like since I signed up for this, I just have to do it. Like, I don't get to pick because why would I sign up and then quit? Um, you know, and if, if you ever do feel that way, assess a long part of time if you have put in the work and if you're getting results. And you'll find out if you're putting in the work, you have results. If you aren't getting results, it's because you're not putting in the work. So I feel like you just, it's like you signed up for the business, make it work, like figure it out. Um, and then another thing that I had two or three people recently tell me that they don't feel like they are part of the team and they're not part of, they don't feel um, like they're in the cool club or whatever. And I said, all it is, is being involved. Stay involved, stay involved in your group, stay involved in your, with your downline, even stay involved with your customers and keep the conversation going. I've taught my kids, if they don't get invited to a party, plan a party and invite other people and you can be that for them. And so, it's, if you stay involved, you're going to find a purpose. And so that's the third thing I want to tell you. The best advice I ever got in this business was right at the very beginning. I figured out the, um, the wardrobe rack idea. And I went to a couple of people in my upline and said, do I share this or do I keep it to myself and my team? And she said, they're going to figure it out anyway. Why not share it? And that was the very best thing I'd ever heard. And so ever since then, I try to teach and share every single thing that I learn. And that's given me a much, much bigger purpose to my business. And so I would say to you guys, find your higher purpose. It's, it isn't selling jewelry. It isn't. I mean, your jewelry is the tool to get your bigger purpose. But if you can find a bigger purpose, you are now having other people depend on you. You are more obligated and you're not going to let anybody down. And so every single day when I start my business and think about what I want to do, which is super exciting, I picture the people who are going to benefit from this and it makes me really happy. And so find your bigger purpose and stay involved and that will, you'll go on forever because it's so enjoyable. Okay. Yes. Love it. Love it. Love it. You guys. And seriously, 
in your business, and this is something that I preach to my team a lot as well, um, it's, it's really more blessed to give than to receive. And when you have that giving mentality and that servant leadership, where you're um, sharing the benefits with other people, whether it's the benefits of the jewelry or whether it's the benefits of paparazzi, whatever, be I mean, all of that is part of paparazzi, right? But as far as joining or whether it's a customer, you know, with the jewelry, whatever it is, share the benefits and be that servant leader. You know, if someone feels like all you want is just their money, um, they're probably going to go somewhere else. You know, they want to build, this is a relationship building business. And the cool thing with paparazzi is you don't have to necessarily be that salesperson because we're giving people uh, a deal every single day. We're making people feel beautiful on a budget. There's so many benefits with this business. You guys, I could just go on and on and on, but yes, totally focus on those benefits. Focus on, um, how, how you can serve other people. I love, love, love those tips. So thank you girls. And I love this business. Okay, so um, tell us about a moment you realized you could truly make a difference in one life. I love, love, love this question. So this is going to be Misty and Melissa. So I didn't have to think very long about this question. The moment came to me instantly when I found out it was coming to me. And um, I'm going to pray that I don't cry. <laughs> <laughs> because it was someone on my team and it was a stranger to me. She joined my team and she is retired. She is a widow. And, um, I was, you know, training her. She's a personally sponsored. I'm not going to say her name if she wants to reveal herself, she can. Um, but every year on December 31st, so I'm helping her. We're trying to get to know each other. Um, she said, I'm a little bit of, of, a, of a recluse, so she didn't really want to meet in person. So everything was, you know, via private messenger. We had a couple phone calls and it seemed like it was really hard to build a relationship with her and I'm a relational person. So um, every year on December 31st, I will share the testimony of our son who was killed when he was 19 in a car accident. And just on that inaugural day, I, I make post and I share that part of my testimony. And um, I later on that evening, and you, the, the question is um, a moment you realize you can really make a difference in one life. This is when it's not about the jewelry. And um, she messaged me and she said, not only am I a widow, but my son also was killed. And so there was this connection of the heart, this moment of empathy where we both understood each other's story and it didn't matter, you know, what amount of jewelry she was selling or it, it didn't, it mattered that we were people, we were women, we had experienced the same type of thing. And I was able to encourage her. And she, you know, she asked me, she said, Christmas is like the hardest time. How do you get through it? And we had this conversation again, back and forth through messenger. You know, over time, I've been to her house and sat in her garage. She opens her garage every Saturday when the weather permits, and she has people who come in her bling room. You know, she has, she has a team. She sells like a mad woman, um, and you wouldn't know she was reclusive or introverted at all if you watch her lives. And you definitely wouldn't know the pain that she's experienced, but that was something that it just, in that moment, I would have never met her without paparazzi. I would have never come in contact with her. I would have never been able to share hope with her through something as tragic as that. And um, that was, that was my moment. Okay. For me, um, when I realized I can make a difference in one life, if this makes sense to anybody, is when I finally realized what a difference paparazzi had made in my life. I don't consider myself any different than any of you. And if I can do this, so can all of you. And this business took me from a place of depression, chronic illness, not wanting to get up in the morning, not wanting to live and not being a good mom to where I am now, where I am involved more in my kids' lives than I ever was. I go to more of their activities than I ever did. I'm out of bed, I'm out of my scooter, and I'm doing more 
that's because of paparazzi. It made such a difference in my life that I know that it makes that kind of a difference in everybody else's life, in that one person's life who messaged me and told me that they are on their way to being a better version of themselves, just like I was, and for me sharing that. So if that makes sense, when I realized what a difference this had made in my life for the better, because it isn't about the jewelry, it's about the strides you make as a person. We're all the same. We're all amazing people. We all can do this. And we all have transformation within ourselves. And that happened with me. And then that's when I realized that it could happen for anybody that I come in contact with. And I'm very cognizant of that. And I share more of my struggles and everything that I go through to connect with anybody out there who's going through the same thing that I am. So just like somebody else said on the piano, it's not about the jewelry. It's about you know, what we go through as people, all of us in this amazing journey, the lives we change and, you know, kind of goes along with the paparazzi slogan. So, all right. Thank you. Love it. Okay. So up next, we're going to get into the, what I call meat and potatoes. Um, what are, and this is what, you know, people love to learn more about, right? What are three tips for those who want to connect with their customers and expand their customer base? Okay. We have, Lisa first and then Heidi and you guys can just go boom shakalaka. All right, yeah, I made a little list. Um, my favorite three tips, you want to make your customers happy. When you're going live and interacting with your customers, you need to give them joy. We're talking about joy for ourselves, but think about your customers. Whether you're entertaining, silly looking, crazy, super nice, teacher, whatever you wanna to do to make them happy is going to keep your customers coming back. Um, second, it's more than just paparazzi. So if you guys are only selling jewelry on your live videos, I think you're going to find a whole new world when you start having conversations and doing more things than just selling jewelry. And it's really easy. I mean, you can start as, as much as saying, what did you eat for dinner? And you get people talking and they feel like it becomes a community and then they feel important because they get to contribute to the conversation. And then last, this is a big one, and sometimes you have to consciously think of it. Look like you're having fun. You need to smile, you need to have energy, and you need to be pleasant because if you don't look like you're having fun, people scroll right on by. If you look like you're having a blast, people are gonna wonder why, and they're gonna watch and stick around, find out you're doing more than just jewelry, and come back over and over. All right, my turn. I am so glad you asked me this question, Rochelle, because this was actually one of the questions that I was asked on the panel on stage in Vegas. And I remember as I was, you know, thinking through my answer, I was like, I wish that I had more time to give more than three. Um, so now huh, I do. So thank you. Um, so my top three tips, um, one, and, and this is super important, is this idea of branding. Who are you? Um, whether it's the New York City shower curtain behind me, which is literally a $20 shower curtain from Amazon. And when I'm live, it's, you know, more streamlined. So people think that's my view. No, that would be nice someday. Um, but that idea of branding, it doesn't have to be, you know, of course, New York City, but who are you? What are you about? Um, I know Amber, like she has her uh, branding, right? I forget what the, what you, the name, but like with your last name, right? Um, and so people have, they know who she is. She know, she know, they know who Amber and Michael are. Um, Heidi and Marty are about New York City and about New York City fashion and style. And that's part of what we do in our, you know, in our business. Um, the second biggest thing is inventory. I'm a firm believer if you don't have it, you can't sell it. Um, I also think it's really important, um, whether you're just starting out or you've been in this thing for a while, to not only think about the sales that you got, but think about the sales that you missed. And I train with that exact phrase all the time. And what I mean by that is when you go live, if you have three of something and you sell out of it, like, yeah, you're excited. But if seven more people wanted that, you need to be keeping track next to you. And when you go and shop again for your inventory, be thinking about that. Was it a gunmetal piece and people go wild over it? Well, you're missing out on potential sales if you don't have enough inventory inventory to go around. And sometimes people will get frustrated and they'll go shop with someone else. So make sure 
that you have enough inventory to keep people, like Lisa said, keep your customers happy, right? Um, third thing, and people were like, you didn't talk about this in Vegas, so this is my moment. Hostesses, I preach about hostesses. Um, if you go to my YouTube channel and you look up Heidi Bound, there's um, my hostess training video is probably one of the videos that people have watched the most. Um, hostesses are game changers for you. I'm a firm believer though that just getting a hostess isn't like the end all be all. You need to train hostesses in what your expectations are. And I hear people all the time, they're like, oh, I can't get a hostess. I talk about it in my show and nobody wants to be a hostess. Well, I also think it's about how are you delivering that? And when I was trying to build my business and things were really exploding for me, I was reaching out to my best customers and saying, hey, like you've been amazing. You've helped me grow. Let me repay you by having you be a hostess on my show. And let me tell you what that's about. So, you know, if, if people see it as, a, as a, an honor and a privilege and you treat them like a queen, you're going to get hostesses. It's all about your delivery. So if you haven't watched that YouTube video, that is a game changer um, in growing my business um, in huge amounts over a year ago. So thank you. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you. So just a reminder, you guys, this will also be on YouTube. Um, afterwards, this will be uploaded to YouTube. So uh, you guys can find it on, you'll just have to Google my name. I mean, Google it, go on YouTube, find Rochelle Peachy, and it'll be on there. And we'll have more of these in the future as well. So um, another quick tip here, we're going to try to speed this up. I know some of you girls have to run along uh, just soon, but what are three tips? This is a very important one as well. What are three tips for people trying to grow their team or transition customers to consultants and we have Amber first and then Lisa. So I, I feel like customers are the best consultants. And the reason why I say that is because they already have the number one thing down for me and that is they love the product. So passion is not something that you can teach someone. You can teach people business skills. You can teach them how to run a business. You can teach them everything they need to know about paparazzi. But if they don't love the jewelry and they don't love the product, they'll never be as successful as somebody who has a passion for this, that they'll perfect their craft. So for me, I always pick my customers as people as I want to join my team. Um, there's three things that I do specifically when it comes to recruiting. I don't really like the word recruiting because I'm not trying to like bring you into something. I'm sharing an opportunity with you. You have to decide if you want to be a part of this or not. So the number one thing I do is I open my mouth, which I'm really good at talking. So I tell people my story frequently. I think that your story is amazing because it's unique. It's yours. Nobody else has that story. And when you deny sharing that to other people, you're blocking your own blessing. So if you don't share that story with your customers, how do they know that you have an amazing story that could possibly be a story just like their own? Um, I had a hysterectomy two months ago and I shared that out with my customers, even though it was super personal. Um, it still feels really personal right now, but I was amazed by how many people had dealt with similar issues and they really related with me because of that. Um, I had quit my job because of health issues. So they understood like why I'd left the retail world and I was really good at it. Why I left retail, I decided to be a stay at home mom when I wasn't even married yet. So. I, there was a lot of reasons I, I put my story out there and people really seem to relate to that. Um, putting the opportunity out there. Well, a lot of people don't know that you can totally do this too. If you never tell people, did you know you can even sign up for paparazzi? I've had people tell me that. Well, they're like, I didn't even know I could sign up. Well, it's open to everybody. So I think a lot of times people look at it as it's just another job. Like, how do you apply for this job? It's really easy, you just go online and buy a starter kit, and then we're gonna start training you. Um, it's really, if you never tell people the opportunity is there, they don't know the opportunity is there. Um, my cousin actually told me one day in a message, I had been buying from her consistently every week. I wasn't buying a ton, but I was buying every week. So she said, I think you'd be really good at this. Well, she didn't know I'd be really good at this. She kind of just on a whim threw that out there. And then I was, then I kind of ran with it. So if you don't ever put it out there for your customers that they could possibly do this too, if they really wanted to, um, they don't know. And then knowing why they would do this. Um, if you don't know your customers, it's really hard for you to relate with them on a level that would convince them to invest money into an opportunity like this. 
I'm not looking for people who just want to buy a starter kit and nap on it. That's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for people who want to change their life with $5 jewelry. So when I recruit or share the opportunity, I want to know why somebody would do this. If their husband just lost his job and um, their income is now the sole income, then I'm going to message them solely on the basis of first, I'm so sorry that your husband lost his job, but I believe I have an amazing opportunity for you that, that could help you add another income easily to your life and maybe soften this blow that you're about to feel with the loss of an income. And so I do it with full wholehearted intentions of I want to help them. I'm not just trying to recruit people to become more successful myself. I'm looking at those people as to why would they want to do this? Do they have children? Are they wanting to spend their summers at home with their kids? And you can only do that if you know your customers. If you never talk to them and interact with them, if you're only focused on selling them jewelry, and selling them on this opportunity, then you're never going to recruit the right kind of people. All right. Um, for, so for my tips for gaining new team members, one of them is very similar to Amber's, where she talked about letting people know they can actually sell it. Um, that moves over to encouraging people, encouraging people that they can be a business person. They are just like you, they can go live, they can do this. And so encouraging people who may not feel like they are cool enough to have a business like this or um, smart enough or important enough. I think everybody can do it and you need to encourage them and explain how you were just like them at one point and you learned and applied. Um, second, you want, uh, this is a really good idea that one of my team members came up with. She has a YouTube channel and I think She's got a video explaining it. Her name's Julie Sanford, but she has local friends who shop from her come and work with her during a live video. They get to experience the entire, you know, panorama of selling. They get to see it happen. They get to be on the other side. It's super duper fun. They become good friends before she signs up and it makes it, they have a better connection than you would with somebody who, you know, reaches out to you and just signs up. So that is a really, really good way to warm somebody up. And it will also help them know if they don't like it, like it's a really good tester. Um, and then third, every single move I make in my business, I feel like people are watching or my team is watching and so, and future recruits. So I try to make every single thing I do look simple. And if it's complicated, I need to figure out how to make it less complicated because people don't want to make their lives harder. They sign up for a business to make their lives easier. And so you want everything you do look like it is, uh, you know, like they can mimic you so that they can have that confidence and start a business and not feel overwhelmed. So keeping it simple is super duper important. Yes, love, love those tips. And ultimately you guys, um, when you're passionate about this business, you just can't help but share this opportunity with other people because seriously, we are hope dealers. We have the opportunity of a lifetime in Rochelle'sOpinion.com here. And I'm telling you what, the sky's the limit, really. Um, it's not a get rich quick like we talked about earlier, but it's hustle and you can make your way to the top if you want. It's hustle and you can pay your bills with paparazzi. It's hustle and you can travel if you want with paparazzi. It's hustle and change other people's life. You know what I'm saying? And it's, and it's doing it on your time and it's your thing, right? It's your business. This is, it, it's just mind blowing to me. The gold mine that paparazzi is. I'm just so excited about it. Even seven years later, y'all. Okay. Um, that's a big deal. Just saying. So, um, next up we have, what's the best advice you would give someone else on what it takes to hit elite. Okay. Um, so elite is like the top, what 0.1% or something of the company. So the very, you know, top of the company here. So we have Melissa first and then Misty. Okay, so elite, it's what we all want, right? So I think that a lot of times we get in our own way, all right, as people, as, you know, consultants, we have these fears that hold us back, whether we know it or not. When we continue to ask questions to, and we know the answers, but we ask the questions, it's just a delay to get us there. So my advice is to decide today and go all in. Love this job. Love paparazzi for all that it can offer you and everybody else around you. Once you decide that, 
getting to elite is going to be easy going live all the time doing hostess parties doing vendor events going having open houses in your house just speaking out of your mouth about paparazzi eat sleep and drink and love it when you do that when you're enthusiastic when your passion shows through for all of this and you're not afraid of the no that you will get because remember a no is not them saying no to you it's them saying no to their dream they're just not ready yet when they are they'll come to you because you talk to them right um we all have goals we all have dreams and when you're enthusiastic about yours when you're enthusiastic about paparazzi and you're all in and you're doing all of those things consistently you will hit elite and then you will just it, it won't even be like a job to you it'll just be your normal everyday love and routine and it'll be awesome so that is my advice to become elite don't get in your own way guys don't be don't be afraid don't let fear stop you fear is the devil's play toy god wants great things for you he wants this for you so open up cross over those fears and you should have it Thank you. All right, big question, but um, I know it's one that's asked a lot um, in, in my team and those that I meet with. Number one, the thing for me in order to, um, someone wants to hit elite that isn't elite yet, know your numbers, know what the numbers are, not only the numbers it takes in an organization and the legs, um, but know what the people you are working with, what their numbers are, be, or what their goal is. Because the consultant that wants to profit $200 a month is not going to work, not going to do the same thing as someone who wants to profit $2,000 a month. They're both important and it takes both consultants, all kinds, to, to your you, elite is a rank that is, is your team. Um, when we talk about life of the party, that's your business and that's what you sell. That's what you do. Elite is a rank that comes with your team and with team building. And so knowing your team, knowing that your numbers and what their goal is, I'm going to work differently with someone who wants to earn $200 a month. I'm going to have a goal with her. She's going to have time with me, but it's also different than someone who wants to reach towards making $2,000 a month. And it takes all those people together to build to that place of becoming elite. Another thing is, is organically do it. You know, um, my, I'm, I'm passionate about healthy business and being debt free. Um, that's one of our major goals in, in our household is that we remain debt free. Um, and so organically ranking to elite every step along the way from director all the way to executive producer. Make sure you get paid at your rank. And don't be set back if you are paid at your rank for six months, seven months, eight months. Um, as long as you are consistently hitting that and working with your team and helping them reach their goals. This business is about people. This company is about people. And it's about empowering people. Um, don't make it all about you. You are not the star of your team. You're not the ceiling in this business. And I think the girls on this panel can agree with me in this business. You can sign somebody up tomorrow that surpasses you next year. And, and that's great. Cheer them on because it's possible. That's another reason we are not a pyramid. Um, but don't make it about you. Don't be the expert in your team. Make sure you bring other people in to help. Um, encourage those that are in your team that have certain um giftings have them come and speak at what they rock at um, i have star consultants come in i have elite come in they all have something to offer so um succeeding together is something our team is passionate about and um so make sure that you're doing it organically because you can be elite in rank and not get paid at elite and that's a tragedy. I don't want to see that happen to anyone. So have a strategy, get paid at your rank, know your team members that you're working with. Not everyone will want to work with you, but the ones that do, make sure you know what they're trying to achieve. Because if you're pushing them past where they want to be, you may lose them. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. So last but not least, if you could go back and speak to yourself as a brand new consultant, what advice would you give? I know we have people on here that might not even be consultants yet. Uh, we have people who are maybe thinking about joining. Um, and there's newbies on here too, right? People that are like, oh, I can't even get to director. Guess what? It's okay. We got you. So 
uh, Amber and Lisa, I'll let you um, finish up here. I know some of the girls got to run here. So we're going to try to quickly wrap this up. Uh, so <laughs> this is probably the most personal question you could have asked me because literally last year I made one of the biggest mistakes that you can possibly make as a leader and I made it all about me. Um, going in to, when I signed up with this company, I decided that I was going to do a lot of the first, like there were no elite in Kentucky. I decided that I was going to be the first elite consultant in Kentucky. I did that. Um, my team did that. And so, um, going into fashionista, I, I wanted to hit fashionista before convention convention uh there were a lot of people who had hit elite and in my mind i became super entitled that it was all about me it was about my goals it wasn't about my team's goals and um and this is so hard to share because it's really an awful representation of myself last year it was probably the worst version of myself that's ever come out in me and so i made it all about me and i wanted to hit fashionista and i wanted to walk stage last year at convention as a fashionista and I did it to the point that I almost broke my team. Um, I really made them feel like they didn't matter at all, that it, my goals were the only goals that mattered. And to the point that my team started to fall apart right after that. And so I went into convention with a very negative mindset and nothing went the way I wanted it to. It didn't go in my mind the way it was supposed to. I found every single thing possible that I could complain about. And I left convention with my husband and he hadn't attended with me. He just kind of showed up for the gala and he said, do you really want to be that person that when everybody sees you, they want to turn the other direction because they're afraid of what's going to come out of your mouth. And it really struck me because it was like, I don't want to be that person. I'm not that person. That is old Amber. That is your old lifestyle that you gave up a long time ago. Do you really want people to see that? And so I had to make a huge grateful adjustment and remember why I'm here and why I decided to do this journey. And I stopped making it all about me and it, we actually grew to A-lister. We were the first fashionista and the first A-lister team in Kentucky. We're actually the only A-lister team in Kentucky. Um, but I now don't just think about myself. I constantly am putting my leaders and my team above me because I want, really want them to succeed not just because I feel like it's going to push my success, but because they need to be here with me. And so I wish I could go back to me then. I feel like I stifled a lot of my growth because I made it all about myself. And if I could go back, that's the one thing that I, there was two things really, I would tell myself to make it about my team and to not complain about things that you cannot change, which is why it's one of my number one things that I say now is you have to let those things go that aren't within your power. Don't let them steal your joy. And there really wasn't anything honest to goodness that I should have been complaining about. I was just an entitled baby. So that's, that's what happened. So. Thanks for sharing that Amber. Um, for me, so I don't regret the path that I've had. I love it, but I would have done something sooner. Um, about two and a half years ago, I seeked out professional marketing help. And it doesn't mean you have to pay for it. There's free book, there's books online, there's books you can buy, there's a million YouTube videos. And I'm still doing that to this day where I'm always, always, always looking to learn. And I don't know if you guys have heard, but when they've interviewed like people who are millionaires and billionaires and stuff, every single one of them has a mentor. No one knows everything. And so having humility and knowing that you don't know everything and knowing that there's always stuff to learn is it will change your life because it will help you. Um, it'll, it'll of course change your business, but it also gives you things you can teach and share after you learn them and after you apply them. And so I would tell myself <clears throat> right at the beginning to take marketing classes and you know, whatever else in marketing, because if you guys have figured out none of most of the people in the company, are not professional marketers. And so why not get help? Why not seek advice beyond the company and figure it out? If your sponsor is not giving you what you need, go beyond, not even in paparazzi, go get a self-help book, go learn from some professionals on YouTube and you will blow your business out of the water because it, you, there are actual strategies to marketing. And if you're not doing them, you are not reaching the full potential of your business. So I would seek out help and mentors in your business.
Awesome. Well, you girls just like so rocked it out tonight. And thanks for putting up with me and my techie issues over here. But I just want to wrap this up and, uh, and just really thank you guys for y'all's honesty. And I mean, Amber, you just shared your heart. A bunch of you guys have been sharing your heart. And, you know, ultimately, um, this is not about us, right? This, we are very passionate about making an impact as we're making an income. And that has grown along the way, right? Because our why keeps on changing. And as we've seen the potential of this business, we have jumped all in. And now it's, yes, the money is like, it keeps on getting better and better all the time, right? But it's also that relationship business. It's also that we get to make a difference. And we were just at a convention a couple weeks ago, and the theme was one life. We have one life, you guys. You have dreams in your heart that God has placed there for a reason. Quit pushing it down. Quit allowing fear to stand in your way. Seriously, start getting comfortable with getting uncomfortable. If you want true success, if you want to truly make an impact, that's what you got to do. I'm telling you, you can do this too. If this little country girl, seriously, y'all, okay, we have teachers, we have all these educated people on the here, okay? Rochelle's a jet setter, which is like one of the top in the company, but guess what? I don't have a college education, okay? Okay, just wanted to make sure you guys knew that, okay? I want you guys to understand that if we can do this, you could do it too. Your story matters. Your journey matters, okay? You just have to make that choice and you just have to jump in and you just have to jump all in and you can do it too. Just show up every single day, right? Show up every single day and choose faith over fear, okay? You can do this too. If we've done this, you can do it. We are hope dealers and we're telling you if we can do this business, you could do the same thing, okay? So cheers to you guys. Thanks so much for tuning in. You guys are a freaking awesome. Thanks for all the shares and all the love and remember to follow us and this video will be on YouTube. Uh, you'll have to search RochelleBeachy.com um, and you'll just have to figure out how to spell it too because it's on my page. That should help, right? Okay, cheers to you guys. Love y'all and have an awesome night. See y'all.